Hi, Welcome. everyone. <laughs> Welcome to Ask a Puppy Trainer Show. I'm Bethany, this is Sparky, and this is... Rosie. Rosie. <laughs> and she's, she's doing a lot of swimming. As, as you she's can. tracking your hand, too. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I don't know how long Rosie's going to last, but hey, Rose, 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 Rose. Okay, you guys can ask a question by putting it in the comments below, and we will get... No, you don't eat hair. And we'll get to as many as possible. And we'll see how long Rosie lasts. I think she was trying to eat your mic. The hair just got in the way <laughs> no. of it. Yeah, that would be a mic grab. So sorry about that. I'm sure that's going to sound great. All right. Oh, are we fussing? Do you need a toy or something? <laughs> or the ability to breathe? A nose extension? I mean, we are in L.A. It's plastic surgery heaven here. All right. Um, <laughs> you want to get started? <laughs> I'm going to get a new nose. <laughs> you get a new nose. Yes. All right. So we have something that we really wanted to prioritize from last week. So bear with me. Uh, we've Oh, speaking of Rosie, this is from Rose. All right. She's got... We're gonna Perfect. Perfect. We're going to start with a pretty difficult question, and then I kind of got something to bounce off of that. It's a nine-week-old, we got to remember this, a nine-week-old Dalmatian puppy, regular naps, training is going great, but she bites all day, every day. She even bit my three-year-old son. It drew blood. Nine weeks old, we just got to keep this in mind. I keep her on the lead when she bites, but she starts getting overbitey. Uh, by jumping around, biting, training's going amazing though. Um, it's hard because it really hurts. I have to push her away and my children have to run to the sofa in order to get him not to bite. So, you know, my, my thing is, this is a nine week old pup. So I'm really glad that training is going great, but I'm wondering how much, you know, exercise this dog is getting the rest of the day. You. I, I totally believe, oh, my Instagram went really weird. I think you did something. I didn't do anything. Um, <laughs> I, really, I really think that you have a very bitey puppy. I'm not saying you don't. I'm not saying that something that you can do is going to magically, you know, make this biting go away. However, I know you have a three-year-old and that's tough, but we need to try to teach the kids the be a tree, be a statue and fold their limbs in, all right? And cross their limbs, freeze, and wait for mom. The more they run, the more they, the squealing, you can't really stop with kids. You can try to try to teach them not to squeal around animals. That's a very useful thing to teach kids. But it's not gonna work in the early stages. It's gonna have to be reminded and, and uh, really, you know, you have to train them too. But anyway, the running and jumping on the couch, that's a big no. You're, they're acting like prey and it's gonna make your puppy 10 times worse. And so, um, yeah, it's just, gonna, it's just gonna take some real work. So you said something about, um, but anyway, have them freeze and yell for you to come and intervene. You said something about, I have him on leash when he, when he gets bitey. You know, for me, normally a nine week old puppy is not on leash all the time, but for me, I would have, if I'm having this issue, a nine week old puppy on leash all the time. There's a few things I would have. I'm gonna do a few protocols and then maybe Sparky can give like some practicality of how to put it together. More, uh, crate rotation, if you're not already doing it, make sure you're doing crate training. Every time this puppy is out, the puppy is dragging leash or I get like a 10 foot leash and tether it to me and I have a treat pouch on me all the time. So that's the third thing. So crate, on leash all the time. I'd probably get a little bit longer than the standard, you know, six foot and uh, food on me all the time. That way, any biting at all, I can redirect to, if I'm sitting down, I have a place next to me. I don't expect a nine week old to stay on place, but I can just redirect with food. I can get into a luring place, drop a few pieces of food and drop it away from you. Like if the puppy's biting you, again, this is nine weeks old guys. If the puppy's biting you, you want them to like turn their head away from you. Oh no, not the cord, not the cord, Rosie. Um, <laughs> you want, you want to make, like if, if Rosie's biting me, biting me right now, I'm going to, well, I'd put her on, she'd be on the ground first of all, but let's say, you know, just for, just to, to understand what I'm saying is I'd put the food on the ground away from me where the pup has to turn their head to eat the kibble. So I hope that makes sense. And I would do it calmly a few times in a row and then ask for a sit and toss a piece of food again away from me. And then instead of um, pushing, I would do blocking and I would probably, I hate doing this for nine week olds, 
but I'd probably pull out a pet corrector and see if it might help. So as long as you're doing the training, as long as you're not doing a lot of holding and cuddling this dog, you're not playing with your hands, like you're only using toys, get a pet corrector that squirts out air, makes kind of a noise, and see if that helps. So if I get really bad biting on, I'm not holding this puppy or petting right now, so I shouldn't really be on my hands um, unless I'm putting the leash on and stuff. And so I can freeze, pet corrector, no, and see if it kind of just startles the puppy a little. It's not supposed to send them running, um, or it may do nothing. I mean, we'll see how sensitive your puppy is. Drive, drive yeah. and sensitivity. Yeah, come back and let us know how the pet corrector works. And, and you just very calm, no, and see if it kind of startles your puppy for a second. They're like, what was that? Sit, good, drop a few pieces of food. Good, drop a few pieces of food. Clip the leash on, drop a few pieces of food, you know? And so I, I would really play around with reconditioning you know, what food looks like and what your hands look like uh, to this dog. And honestly, you're going to have to keep your youngest out of the training for right now. G like, give us two weeks, and then if you want to come back with a follow-up question, Rose, that's a pretty easy name to remember. We'll try to prioritize you and give you some kid stuff. Um, what else can they do? Nine-week-old. I know. I, every piece of advice you're giving, I was like, my goodness, for a nine-week-old, that's kind of crazy. It's it, pretty young. Yeah. They, I'm going to say have, this. They do have razor-sharp well, teeth. Dalmatian, too. Dalmatian, yeah. Super high drive. Yeah, Dalmatians, yeah. most of the Dalmatians I've ever worked with are probably in... Almost 13, 14 years of doing this, I've only worked like five Dalmatians in all that time. Yes. They're not a very common breed. So a lot of people don't really understand their temperament. They're very, very, very high energy neurotic puppies. They can be. All the ones I've trained. I guess the ones that are good aren't going to end up coming to me. But yeah. from what we, what I've seen personally, they're all very high energy. The, the rule of thumb I've given for every one of them to almost every family I've done a structure schedule for, it's if you have time to work with them, they can be out. If you have time to manage them, they can be out. Yeah. Kids don't manage these types of dogs. Mom and dad have to manage them. Yeah. And when they're out of the crate, they always have to have a task. That's why our structure schedule can be super, super, super detailed or it can be a bit looser if you're not running into as many problems. You are following the free time window down to the T. Walk and play, less of the play, more of the walk. Training, supervised separation. And if you don't have time to spend that time with your puppy, they're just getting a, I guess they're getting less time out of the crate because they can't handle being out of the crate without having pro probably pretty strict focus yeah. on them and you working with them. It will one, save your kids' hands and feet. One, they're gonna build a different relationship because it's less fear and it's gonna be more training. I agree with Bethany about the three-year-old. The baby's just a little too young. Maybe for that type uh, yeah. of age and breed and the issues that you're having. I mean, if you had this little thing, you would still be asking us about, oh, my, my <laughs> pug is crazy around my three-year-old. What do I do? But that's different than the biting issues you're having. Yep. I just want your kids to get more confidence being around the puppy because you'll be in control of the puppy. And eventually, they'll, they'll almost erase the running away fear of the puppy because in their brain, that's how they default to the puppy now. You want to erase that and replace it with more training. Yeah. That's going to happen after you work with the puppy for a couple weeks and they don't do as much. And whenever they interact, they got that food pouch like Bethany mentioned. Yeah. And, and feel free to check out our online school. I'm not just trying to plug it, but you've got kind of the same for the next person. you got kind of something serious going on here. And if you go to thepuppyacademy.com, uh, you'll see our online section. And that way we could tailor this more towards it's more you. About the, it's more about the structure of the program that I yeah. think she's referring you for. Yeah. Is Right now you're, you're looking up everything on Wikipedia or you're doing like online dog training where you're looking up all the different videos. We structure it. We tell you what to do first, second, third, and then 50th. And then That's the biggest and difference. And then we'd be able to tailor it to you. Yeah. This jumping off is uh, that I had from a golden doodle from Delam 62. Are, are you biting the, She's eating the paper? You're eating the paper? No, <laughs> no big deal. And she's not ingesting it. It's not, not that big of a deal. Um, he won't stop biting when we try to put the leash on or rub his tummy. We try to deter, deter with toys, and he tries to bite us still. He is leashed all day. Um, to be respectful of where we are. He just can't seem to stop the biting. So my daughter's really frustrated, even scared. He's bit me a few times to where I bleed. And this is a three month old golden doodle. This is not uncommon for this breed. We actually see this 
um, quite a bit. Baby shark. Baby shark. That's so, what so Delama, I please listen to our instruction to the first uh, woman that, that we just talked talked about with that nine week old Dalmatian. But just to tailor this specifically to you, you, I, I would personally be doing crate work and trying to do food um, and put a slip leash over the dog. And so I, I teach the dog to actually put their head through a slip leash with a piece of food. This is sometimes easier in crate. So they're not all wily and all over the place. It's more difficult. Wiggle butt outside of crate. Yeah. Usually starting wiggle butt inside the crate. Now they might just back up into the corner because they don't want to be leashed up because they know that it controls them. That's another matter. But I would I would start with that. And then uh, please give your daughter the same advice that we gave the, the first woman. But for me, when you say try to rub his belly, most puppies will bite you when you I, try to rub their belly. I think 90% of puppies, if you rub their belly, when they're trying to be silly, goofy, but also a little bit defiant, it's being hidden under all the cuteness, Yeah. then you rub the belly and they're going to nip at your hand because that's not the mode that they're in. So this one, for instance, I know this is a pug. This is not a wild golden doodle, but this one was pretty wild Worse earlier. Wild yeah, she was pretty wild earlier, and I just used my hands really firmly, and I was just like, hey, no, and just holding her in a way that's just very business-like, almost like a vet would. Like, I'm not trying to be her friend. I'm trying to calm her down, and in, in, in a sense, that is being a friend. But anyway, then then I can do some some pets, and I stick with chest, shoulder. See how slow my fingers are going? When I have owners practice this, they always do this. Fast. Yeah. And I'm like, whoa, slow those fingers down. It's You're like, trying to get that dog to melt. Yeah. Into. Melt into. Exactly. I want to point out too, when you, can you show the whole uh, holding the chest thing as well? So this is a hand mainly on the chest and kind of propping up the chin. Oh, I blocked my mic. Mainly on the chest and kind of propping up the chin a little bit. And then when she starts settling down, then she'll start shifting that shoulder. It from the angle of the camera, it might look like it's the trachea. We don't want to put not. any hand on <laughs> it's, the trachea. It's, it's just, we want to be it's just the jaw chest and then slightly the, above to the jaw. This is the jaw because she has no face or neck <laughs> or neck. <laughs> but anyway, see, she gets kind of squirmy. Hey, hey, and then I go back into you know rubbing. And so if she was still biting me, then I'm like, okay, she doesn't want to be pet right now. She wants to do things. That's something we should also mention for our last one too, Rose. Sometimes dogs don't want to get pet. And if we're doing too much petting from the kids and it's unbridled, uncontrolled from the kids, puppies start adopting that energy, but using it in a different way. Redirecting to a toy means you go, I'm tired of being bitten. Here's a Nyla bone. I'm going to walk away till I have time to work with you. <laughs> it's not redirecting them to a toy so you can still pet them or, or do something else to them. Now, sometimes, and I know we've, you've seen us do it on videos well, and on shows. Well, I was going to say, sometimes a toy works for the leashing up. Mm -hmm. But I mean the petting. Eh, not, not I got a piece of advice for the leashing up too. Um, another technique I really like to use is if I can get the dog to walk forward. So I'll usually put some treats to the nose or kibble to the nose while they're in the crate. This is for roly-poly in or out of the crate. And then I'll show them the food and I'll drop a piece in front of them. So they're at this angle, they got to turn, shift the shoulder under, sorry, I got to get on camera, shift the shoulder under to take the food, drop a few more closer to you. They stand up to get the food, drop a little pile of food. And as you drop a pile of food, start gearing them up yeah. and doing everything. That is probably more of a crutch than a tool for learning. But that's okay. But what she's saying is more of a tool for learning. Yeah. I'm just trying to get your guys' harness on yeah. for a nine week old. So Be you just gotta play. Because you can, or this one's three months, but you Sorry. can oh, you three. can get yeah. over the hump that Four way. Months. Just by not creating so much conflict, you can improve your relationship yeah. with your dog. We and had a then, Great Dane that did this about four years ago and it was just a really crazy, strong Great Dane. After about two days of Bethany doing it with this dog, all of the trains were able to do it after that. It's because I removed so much conflict, yep. you know, and I just redirected and didn't say much and didn't create excitement. Okay, anyway, we've got to move on. All right, so we got quite a few questions about, I'll just read one of them here uh, from Cillian. Uh, <laughs> does that taste delicious? Uh, Everything tastes good to her. <laughs> uh, mini Dachshund. Ooh, yeah, okay, so it's going to be whining in the crate. I, I don't, you don't even have to tell me. I just hear Mini Dachshund and it's like crate yep. whining or, or playpen whining. Or barking or extreme separation yeah. anxiety. Yeah, this one is playpen whining specifically, I think. Um, or is it good that he has the opportunity to go to his crate in his independent time? So here's the thing. <laughs> nice job there. 
Uh, for me, when it comes to what we consider supervised separation, which is playpen, I don't know how you look at it, but me personally, if my dog is whining in the playpen because I'm leaving the room, that's pretty normal. It's a puppy, you know, mm -hmm. right? It's pretty normal. And so the whole point of supervised separation is that you're teaching your puppy how to be in the same room with them, but they don't have access to you like this all the time. You're teaching them to exist calmly without having something from you. Yeah, so uh, maybe if you just go to the bathroom real quick, but if you come back in the room and your puppy's excited, you have to address that. You have to go over to the playpen, say no, make a little noise with the playpen. Mm -hmm. If it's movable, you can even move it into the dog a little bit, like spatial pressure with the that we do with the crate door to teach the dog that in order to uh, get what they want or just in order to be able to relax, they have to move back and chill. It's really, mm -hmm. it's really normal body language for dogs. They, it just gets muddled when we hold them, hold the puppies all the time. And so anyway, you have to address excitement if you come into the room and you create it. If you ignore it, you're actually creating more anxiety. So you got a choice. Yep. Learn how to address it to help your puppy view comings and goings as being calm. Or honestly, what we tell most people, just create your puppy more. And if you do need to do something like take a shower or something like that or go out of the room, you need to put your puppy in crate and let them have crate time. I personally just think it's a little too early and maybe you addressed this. I was kind of reading it over again. For a nine week old puppy, I think it's just a bit too early to expect supervised separation on place with you leaving the room. The fact that you Oh, she said room, place? Yeah, that's not gonna happen with place. Playpen, sorry, playpen. It oh, was playpen. Playpen. I just think it's a bit too early, simply because you're still trying to build your puppy's confidence with you being in the room and him not having access to you, and then doing the no look, no talk, no touch while he's in the playpen. I think you got more time being in the room with him and getting him to just chill lay on his bed, grab a bone, grab a toy, and self-play with you there. If you've already gotten that, then maybe you're ready for it. I think if I was gonna move up to me leaving the room with him in the playpen though, I would try to transition him to a place and doing supervised separation on place first before transitioning to me leaving the room with him in playpen. That requires quite a bit of work and age, a little bit of maturity too. So you got some time. This is what I'm trying to say. Drew, Drew asks, how do you feel about um, having your puppy downstairs in the living area in crate with you moving around uh, that, and then crate in a quiet room at night? I mean, I think that's great. That's To me, I kind of prefer that a lot of times over mm -hmm. the playpen because I think the playpen can create a lot of excitement that not everybody knows how to address. And then even if you know how to address it, some dogs can't handle it. But, but there's a but. You need to still do some alone time during the day. So do it half and half. Do some crate time alone during the day, crate time in the living room with everybody moving around and ignoring the, the puppy doing anything on. I would gauge, I would go off of how much energy the puppy has. Super, super high energy puppy. I'm gonna probably do a little bit more crate time, less less downstairs where we are, more upstairs in the bedroom, or maybe it was the opposite. Well, so, so, so sorry. If, if a puppy has more energy, you think they should get more alone time in crate during the day? More alone time in crate because they're gonna settle more quickly yeah. and chill. If they're downstairs and they're a super high energy, high, high drive dog, they're really gonna struggle to settle inside the crate while watching you. It's like taking your sleeping bag, putting it on a main highway, all the traffic, all the noise, all the pedestrians, all the people, it's really hard to relax and settle. Cause it's, you're gonna accidentally overstimulate them. Yeah, I do like Bethany's idea, I'm just, I'm not, a, I'm not a big be in the crate and see people type of trainer simply because I think it's really hard for them to settle in the beginning. But yeah. if you have a dog who is able to settle relatively quickly, like I'm talking like 10 minutes, that's pretty darn great, then yeah, give it a shot. Yeah. She's just going to town on I know, so I've, I've kind of I've kind of like allowed this a few times, so I want to just show you guys and address it. Um, I'm, I'm not... I'm not quick to be like, no, and rip anything out of her mouth. She'll be okay if she eats a leaf or something like that. You can create resource guarding by constantly pulling things from their mouth. So just very calmly, just, just, no. We actually got a piece of it that time. So I'm going to roll. I roll the bottom. I roll the bottom lip over the teeth gently. It doesn't hurt her, but it's enough to get something like a rock or something not safe calmly out of their mouth. Allows them to and then, feel the pressure of their tooth on their lip before your finger. Yes. So it's almost like teaching them what you feel. So when they open their mouth and back off of the hand, 
then it gives you an opportunity to, remove to the pull poop. it out. Like if I had a nice scarf or something. And this is for it. a semi calm, relaxed dog. If your dog just grabbed the sock and ran away with it, you and can... you try to rip it out of the mouth or like do the roll, you're probably going to get bit. So you got to choose your battles. And also, she's holding this dog. She can't run away. She can't back away. If you had a leash, you could scoop up the dog. You can do stuff like that. But your, your big thing is you're not trying to chase down the dog to remove something from their mouth with the lip roll. That's how you get bit. So what was I saying? Oh, yeah. So when this is, again, he's right. Like, you don't, you don't chase down the dog and, and do that. <laughs> yeah, I would calmly put a leash on. But this is a really mellow situation. I just want her to know that she, like, she needs to stop. So let's, let's try it. So I don't have food on me, unfortunately. I wish I did. But I'm just going to go, no. She's checking in with Bethany. She's checking in because of our trainers have done so much food redirection. This Not isn't because of one time with Bethany. That is because. She's been worked on. Yeah. Before. So she, I literally said no and did a little bump. And she looked at me like, all right, then fine. Give me something else worth my food. Where's my redirection? That is the kid. Wow. I got to go tell the staff how great they are. That's Elizabeth. Look at that. Look at that. Holy moly. Well, that was really easy. But that is because of all the food redirection stuff that, that our staff will all. She wants it again. She's she like, hey, hey, you bring that back here. That was so good. Okay. So with a normal dog at home, yes. Like he said, if I, if I had a dog grab a sock, I would actually calmly be going and grabbing a leash, calmly corner them, or maybe use a toy to draw them into me, or food, sit, leash, and then handle it. You don't, don't panic, don't chase, don't make a game out of it. Uh, do you want to grab a TikTok question? Sure. Because I think that's all of mine. I'll double, I'm going to double check. Okay. I'm just going to the top. Sorry, we had some that we wanted to prioritize today. And just... There's a couple from last week that were really good ones we thought would apply to a lot of people. Yep. Oh, yeah, right. I have one more. Okay. You got one? Okay, my dog is six months old and pees when out of the crate. Help! I have him on leash but still pees. Are you on a schedule? And what I mean by that is, is he in the crate for a certain period of time? Usually for a six month old, I'd probably look in about three and a half to four hours. And then does he go in the crate for that amount of time, come out? Go for a potty. If he doesn't go potty, he goes back to the crate. Rinse and repeat until he eventually goes potty. 15 minutes back in the crate. And then he eventually gets free time. Yeah. I have a feeling we're probably not doing that. And if you are and you're doing everything right, you've watched our videos already, maybe it's too much water. To give yeah. you a measurement, it's a half cup of water for every 30 pounds of body weight every two to three hours. What even, are we going to add? Even for a, I was just going to say, even for a six-month-old, you know, mm -hmm. I wouldn't normally be really looking at water. But if you're having a potty issue, then you yeah. have to. You have to go back to that puppy puppy mentality and i know it's warmer outside now i know it's a little bit more toasty and the dogs are getting a little bit more or a little bit more thirsty Here, more anyway. often yeah. when i have hotter weather one i try to time my walks at a better time throughout the day where it's a bit cooler usually 6 a.m i'll do like a 6 45 7 p.m walk there are things you can do to help your dog regulate their temperature better so they don't feel the need to drink as much am i playing footsie with you <laughs> so i'm just twitching my foot <laughs> uh, and then when you do eventually give the water give that Give the half cup for every 30 pounds of body weight every two, three hours. And when you've given that water and they th you finish it quickly, wait 10 minutes. Yeah. See if they go from <sighs> to, all right, I'm actually good. Most time it's mindset, not actually physical need. So when the mindset flips, most time they don't need that extra water. If they are still panting after 10 minutes, give a quarter cup. Again, wait 10 minutes, another quarter cup, wait 10 minutes. Most time they're not going to need as much as what we're probably giving or what they think they're dr they need to drink. We have to try to measure it out and see how much they actually need from us. I'm also wondering if this dog is marking at six months old. Um, I don't mm -hmm. know if it was male or not, but that Good tends question. to be when they start to feel out marking. And so you'll 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 be able to judge. They don't do a full pee. Um, and and it stinks. And it's females darker. females will do it too. And so just kind of play around with that because then that's a different conversation. Yep. If um, you if you're getting marking in the house, the trail on the ground is going to look thicker and stickier. Because it's an enzyme they push into their urine to mark. Okay. At that young? Really? I don't know. I, I mean, I knew that. I thought all dogs had it from birth. Huh. My border collie, Dusty, surprisingly doesn't, but my other male dogs do. Like Cheyenne marks. Cheyenne will go and mark on a tree, and you can see it like have like a trail. It's so just crazy. dark urine. It's Yeah, and they're pushing out all their pheromones and spreading out their scent. Okay. Uh, Rain says, do you guys let your puppy cry it out at night? 
Uh, after making sure they go to the bathroom, we've been reading so many conflicting things online. We're trying to slowly introduce her, but we're worried that it's not working. That one's tough. Honestly, it is. It have you started with daytime crating? It depends Because I have learned it's a lot easier to do daytime crating and let them cry it out when it's not 9.56, 10 p.m. and I need to go to bed and wake up for work. Mm -hmm. So if you are putting your puppy in the crate during the day and they're eventually starting to settle in the crate and you're only get the, getting the whining at night, then I might try to see if I can push them 20, 30 minutes, maybe go to bed a little bit earlier with the plan of waking up a little bit earlier. So at least I have more leeway to stay awake before I have to be asleep. And I'd play around with that. I'd also try crating a little bit earlier throughout the night and then giving one final potty right before you go to bed. What are you gonna add? No, nothing, that's it. Perfect. Uh, Brianna says, my nine week old is not interested in toys, so I can't keep them entertained in the crate. Brianna, we actually, and this is an Instagram comment, we actually like the dogs to just go and crate and be calm and not have anything. The only reason I add like a Kong with food, nine week, a Kong with food or something like that, the only reason I would do that is if they're really struggling. And so you want crate to mean calm, so that's completely fine. Puppies I, need to be sleeping about 16 to 20 hours a day. Yeah. So when they're in that crate, their only purpose in the crate is just to sleep. Now, I would be interested in building a play drive with your dog, but that's that's a different matter, and, and it's it's just... Outside it, of Crate. Yeah, yeah, it's outside of Crate, and it's a bit of a different question, and so I won't go into that. It's a choking hazard when they have toys inside the crate, and they're like stuffy or fluffy toys. They pull out the stuffing, they can get impacted. Yeah. We got paused on Paused due to poor connection on Instagram. Well, TikTok, we're back. <laughs> hey, Instagram. But yeah, just watch the type of toys that are in there too. No stuffing. Yeah, that's yeah. what he was saying. It's a safety thing. Yeah. Thing choke. And Blaze, the creator, says, my five-month-old uh, golden retriever pulls a lot and bites the leash. Um, I would start with more food work in the house, in the yard, in the front of your condo, in the hallway of your apartment, whatever it is. A five-month-old, I would probably go ahead and get head control. So I would look into you know different ways of training that's not necessarily on harness, but I wouldn't go outside and do that. I would yeah. practice in the house, hallway, yard, things like that. And I would honestly, I would probably try to build a little bit of food drive, especially if you live in a suburban or city environment. If you live more rural, I, I actually wouldn't. It, that's you know there's some differences there, but yeah, build up some some food work drive. Just come, like don't go for a walk. Just walk backwards come sit food let's go turns sit food like don't be going anywhere that would be my first thing to try look up balance training training tools that's what i check out and and you've got to have the heavy heavy food work because remember this is only five months old yep and so just keep that in and mind. definitely look up some different training rules training videos associated with whatever training tool you pick yeah don't just grab it slap it on and use it you and the dog will have a bad day and they have to be trained with yeah. first well i was thinking just slip leash like just start with you I know mean a, a, slip proper, leash, a proper a proper fitting the, slip leash in the house you know and, and really house, okay. you know teach the give and take of the leash the leash and maybe you know come to think of it the biting thing sometimes our dogs are biting leash a lot because there's so much unnecessary pressure accidentally you know, no, no offense to you. I'm not saying it's all you. I'm sure you have a very bitey retriever, but it can cause some frustration if they want to go this way and then they feel the leash, especially on harness, it kind of makes them hump over and then they won't respond to food because there's too much stimulation and they, maybe they haven't been trained to give in to leash pressure, you know? And so anyway, I would just look into some bare bones basics like that. Um, I'm going to squeeze in one more real quick while I've got this up before we hit our 130. I'm getting an eight week old puppy, uh, golden retriever Saturday. We're crate training. How often should I get up throughout the night to take her outside? Oof. Eight weeks old. Eight I'd, weeks old. I'd say I'd start with four hours and yeah. see if she has an accident because retrievers tend to be really great about mm -hmm. holding their pee and no water two to three hours before bed. Yep. I was gonna say four hours before bed for You're a little so itty bitty eight week old. No, no way. Because I'm gonna be if I'm going to bed her, at no, 10 I'm p.m. Be, not me, because I'm gonna be working with my puppy before I go to bed. So I'm gonna give him a couple of licks or a piece of ice or do two to three hours. Okay, so if you did what she said, which is you're working your puppy before bed, then follow that advice. If you're not working your puppy before bed, cut off water a little bit earlier and make sure you get one final yeah. potty before you go to bed. You don't go to bed without a final potty, otherwise, you're waking up in an hour. 
And, and Riley, I read your question, so now I can't skip it. Rosie's had it. She's now chewing on my... She's been so good. Like, I'm not even going to... Get it, Rosie. Not even going to do anything about this, because she's so gentle and pitiful. You Go ahead. It. You just you get the zipper. Um, real quick, Riley, if your puppy's not taking treats, maybe skip a couple meals if your puppy is a healthy weight. Usually, if you skip... You still offer it. Yes, like, thank you. I was waiting for that like part. You still offer like something simple. Come, good, handful of food, you know. And if they don't want it, morning, um, afternoon, even evening, if it's a healthy weight, that next morning, they're going to be ready to go. And then work with more higher value treats outside. But you, it sounds like you just need to build food focus if yep. food training is what you're going for. And I'm not cuddling with that dog for the duration of that day that they're not taking food for training. That's good. That builds and drive. they're getting a little bit more crate time yeah. and more supervised separation. Just for a few days because yep. it builds drive to want to do wanna stuff. Want to do something. They want to, yeah. but everything a puppy gets is expected. That's just how puppies work. They're opportunists. Mm -hmm. So when you start making them earn and ask and wait and get, be <laughs> I was like, what is she's, this? She's had it. She's done so good. You have a little rough beard on my arm. 30 minutes. She's done so good. I lost my chain of thought. Whatever I was it saying, was I'm sure it was great. <laughs> All right, guys. Well, thank you so much. And we'll see you here next week. Same time, same place.